Alison Saar's studio practice and her public art practice have mostly involved uh, representing unsung heroes and heroines from history, people for whom race or gender have created, have created a, a scenario where they've been forgotten or their contributions have been deemed meaningless. The sculpture is pretty interesting because she chose a very specific moment in the Corps of Discovery's journey where York was considered uh, an equal. He, was he is carrying a rifle, um, which he was given as an equal mem member of the party. And, um, but it's also at a time when their military issue dress was starting to wear away. And so he's, he's shirtless, wearing um, worn military issue pants, but wearing moccasins that they had to make to um, replace their shoes. So it's at a time in the journey theoretically, where York was a very, very important part of the Corps of Discovery as a person that voted to stay on the West Coast um, f through the winter, as a person that was responsible for helping to feed the other members of the Corps of Discovery through his hunting prowess. So um, he was very much uh, uh, an equal member of the party during the Corps of Discovery period, but then once they returned to the East, of course, he was returned to slave status. It became clear that Allison was somebody that could take a, a, a person from history and bring that person's contributions to life in a very visual way. And that, I think, was the thing that piqued our attention most acutely in looking at Allison's work. We really had a lot of, a very high level of confidence that Allison's idea would evoke um, York as a man and um, maybe strip away some of the myth, but also bring into focus his contributions. It, in a way, it fleshes out the, um, the sense of history that Lewis and Clark brings to the campus. It's a lasting legacy. You know, it, uh, it's a cast bronze sculpture. It will be here for you know, generations to come.